Thank you for the Ganyo Genetic Group for inviting me to be here. Um, I guess a lot of the things that Priscilla said uh, is a little bit what I'm going to talk about. Uh, so thank you, Priscilla, for setting up the, the stage so nicely. I think I will refer back, you know, to what you've said. Um, I'm going to share my screen uh, with a little presentation just to keep me, I guess, on my, you know, keep me on track here. So when I was thinking about uh, this presentation like a month ago when I was invited, I kind of kept thinking about flexibility. And in the last week, when I was really putting things together, I wanted to add communication uh, into, into my talk as well, because I think a lot of, you know, what we do, what I do at least uh, in the company has, you know, is connected to good communication and, and communication overall. So I, I decided to, you know, be flexible and change my title. And I'm calling it the power of flexibility and communication. Uh, so some insights into women in science in the industry. And uh, starting with my professional trajectory, uh, since I was a kid, I've always wanted to be a scientist. Um, I didn't know really what a scientist was, uh, but I think I thought it was fascinating. Um, I always thought it had to be, you know, a medical doctor. Um, so I thought maybe I need to do medicine for me to be a scientist. But as I grew up, I found out that, you know, almost every profession, uh, you can be a scientist. And uh, I decided to go to agronomy. So uh, as Dr. Rosanna said, I did agronomy in 2006 at the University of Federal, Universidad Federal de Berlândia, here where I live now. Uh, and... You know, when you start a career, I guess you everyone mostly is on doing their PhD now. But when you start a career, um, you have some dreams, right? I wanted to be a scientist, uh, but I didn't really know uh, on what kind of crops I would be working, what kind of area I would go. Would I work with soil science? You know, it's such a big field, such a wide field that you can choose uh, different areas. And so you you've plan some steps, right? I, I plan to go to the university, I made it, but then a lot of this stuff that happens are by chance. And the reason why I added communication, uh, I think that more than the institutions you go to or the positions you have, uh, the people that you find along the way and that you can connect with and learn from, uh, they are the most important thing along the way. So um, some of the things that have happened like back when I graduated, when I was doing my, my course uh, that are related to the connection and communication with those people is what led me to the rest of the steps that I've shown here. So if you think about all the internships I've done uh, at Embrapa, Syngenta and Monsanto, it all started because uh, of, you know, this first step of mine. Uh, so I, I met a, a researcher from Embrapa at a meeting and I got to do two or three years of internship there uh, on vacation time when I was on vacations uh, because of this meeting. And then he knew someone at Monsanto. And then I got to do my uh, work for my undergrad uh, project at Monsanto because, you know, this guy knew this person here. Uh, and then a prof another professor at the university uh, had worked at Syngenta and had a research project uh, that was in connection with them. And that's how I got to do an internship there. So besides, of course, being fortunate enough that Uberlandia has a lot of companies around, um, you know, the communication, I think, really uh, set this stage of how the other things started. And, you know, it's also important, I think, to be flexible, to accept any changes that might happen. And here, when I'm talking about flexibility, I think this internship at University of Kentucky that I did in between my, uh, when I finished, uh, the university and before I started my master's is one of those things. It's also about communication because the same researcher from Embrapa knew uh, the researcher from the University of Kentucky. And uh, my professor, the Dr. Lisa Valencourt there gave me the opportunity to stay for a month 
at the University of Kentucky. So that was something that was off course. And um, I was like, yeah, sure, let's go. Uh, of course, you know, that's a big dream uh, to go to another to another country, to study in another university. And it's important for us to accept those changes. And the other uh, change that I wanted to mention uh, is during my master's, I started with one project. And midway, things didn't arrive. The antibiotics didn't come to Brazil. And I just couldn't do the research that was planned in the beginning. And this is where, you know, we, me and my advisor had to be flexible enough for us to change midway. And in the end, I defended something else. Uh, but it's important sometimes to not like dwell a lot on, on our failures and find right solutions and adapt ourselves. Well, then I, you know, because of the internship, I ended up doing my PhD at University of Kentucky in plant pathology. Uh, I did my master's in genetics and plant breeding. And then in 2016, I'm sorry, I made a mistake there. It's 2016, I started at Monsanto and now uh, Bayer. Uh, so, you know, that's my, my professional trajectory um, so far. And when, when we talk about flexibility, we have some core values in the company, and one of them is flexibility. And it might think, it might seem uh, that it's something like uh, that we need to, you know, do anything or work too much, but it doesn't have anything to do with that. Uh, for us in the company, flexibility has a lot to do with innovation. So, um, you know, we are in a world that is constantly changing uh, and we now have so many different things than we had even when I started working five years ago. Things are so different already uh, and we have done so much in the company to bring innovation. So being flexible, uh, it's not just, you know, about doing everything, but sharing new ideas, thinking about new things to try to deliver the best solutions and also learn with failures. And I think that's a big thing for women. Um, we sometimes are, you know, we don't have the courage to do that. Uh, and we need to be comfortable, I think, with thinking that a new idea might not be the best one. It might not work out. But we need to, you know, be bold enough, I guess, to try to go for it and, you know, innovate. And if it doesn't work, uh, the good thing, I guess, at least as far as I have seen here in the industry, is that we do have, you know, a space for failure to happen for us to, you know, learn with it and change it and then maybe even bring even more innovation uh, with that. I have to say I have some resistance to, to, to that kind of thing. Um, I'm always a little bit attached, I guess, to what we call plant breeding as an art. Uh, I think if you're all plant breeders, we always say, oh, plant breeding is an art. And now we are switching a little bit uh, from that and talking a lot more about data and about new things. And I kind of, you know, my heart has still the, uh, the art part, um, but it's important for us to learn to innovate and bring new solutions that we need. Um, adaptability is also something that is in our flexibility. And uh, I just wanted to bring a story here that I think it has a lot to do with what Priscilla said, the imposter syndrome. Um, I did another talk at the, the University of Sinope, and right after the talk, one of the students there contacted me on LinkedIn, and she shared with me her story, and she sa said she was a postdoc, and she didn't know what to do, there was no positions open for academia, um, and she was just kind of waiting and hanging in there. Uh, and I said, why don't you apply for a position in the industry? And her answer was, I do not fit the job description. Uh, she was working, um, now I don't recall, but she was working, you know, on something that she said it didn't fit any of the job descriptions that were open. And I said, you know, sometimes we are not looking exactly for that. I mean, um, it's impossible for a company to find exactly what we're looking for. I worked with one disease in one crop and specifically one protein <laughs> for that. And, you know, a company is not looking for that. So how would they hire me? if I don't have the skills, you know, when you read the job descriptions, there's so many things. Um, and that's one of the things that Priscilla said about the imposter syndrome. We, t we as women, we tend to say, I cannot go and do that. I don't have the qualification. And so I incentivated her and I told her, go for it, try it out. And she, you know, sent me a message on LinkedIn, like 
I think six months ago. And she said she got a position at GDM. And she was, you know, thank you for for the push and for helping me to, you know, see that I do not need to fill all the job description requirements. And, you know, being able to adapt yourself is what uh, is important, I think. When I started, again, I said I worked with one disease, one crop. And when I started, my, my new leader told me, oh, you're going to work with all the crops, all the diseases in corn. And in my head, I was like, how am I going to do that? That's impossible. You know, I I can do one, maybe two, but how can I do all of them? And, you know, you're just, it's different. Uh, it's a different emphasis. It's a different perspective. And then one year later, it was like, okay, so you're going to add another crop. You're going to add soybean on it. And again, I had the same feeling like, oh, that cannot, you know, that's not going to work. And, you know, it did. And now when I look back at it five years later, I'm like, huh, maybe I can now try a new crop. You know, it kind of, you keep on learning and you keep on seeing different things and it gets really exciting in the end. Uh, and it's, you know, you just have to adapt yourself. I think we all, you know, doing a PhD and a master's and going to grad school overall gives you all the tools that you need to excel later at a company. So that was one of, of the things that I wanted to, to point out on flexibility. And I guess the other thing I, I brought here post-pandemic, because I think for the last year and a half or even more than that now, but we uh, all had to be very flexible, right? We had to find new ways to connect. We had to find new ways to communicate. We had to find new ways to keep work going on. And being remote uh, or even, you know, a sort of a hybrid uh, work model. So maybe a few days in the office, maybe a few days at home. I think it was really good for women in general uh, because, you know, sometimes uh, you might have kids. Uh, I just had a baby and uh, he's three months old. So I am on my maternity leave. But I'm looking forward when I go back uh, to be, you know, maybe a few days at home uh, where I can see him and, you know, help and see him grow. So I think the post-pandemic uh, work uh, might bring us women a lot of flexibility and a lot of good opportunities. You might not need to be in the same city anymore. You might not need to be even in the same country anymore. So going back to the job description, if you see a job description that is even for the U.S., apply for it. You don't know. Maybe it's going to be a fully remote work uh, and you can just do it uh, from your house. So, you know, I think the that's what I wanted to touch base on the on the flexibility. But as I was thinking about uh, what to talk here, I thought that communication in the end uh, is so important to what we do uh, as women in industry. So as I explained in the beginning, my networking was really what led me to where I am today, right? Uh, a lot of years ago when I was in, in college. But all of that started a chain of events between my professors and between some mentors and some advisors and some professionals in the companies I've, I've done internships at that kind of, you know, in the end, most probably is why I am here today talking to you guys. Uh, so networking is really important. And not just that, to make your career path, but also inside the company. Um, me and Priscilla, we are in the same team in the company at Bayer. Uh, we are in plant breeding. Uh, but we often have meetings with people from other areas of the company. Uh, the more commercial areas, sometimes the biotechnology areas. And that always help us to, you know, get a different perspective a different view, diversity as well. It's always important to have people that either have a different background from you um, or that, you know, are from a different culture than you are. And so you can add up to what you're thinking and your ideas. And you go back to the innovation that I mentioned. The more diversity we have in a team, uh, you know, different things can come up and more innovation you're going to get. So networking, communication, all of those connections that we make, are really important. And I think as grad students, um, your professors, I guess, are the source one of communication, your colleagues. Um, I've had the, the lucky chance of seeing some of my colleagues sometimes in the company, either working the company or some of them in academia and coming to connect with us, with other professionals as well. 
Um, I've had my advisor come uh, once, my master's advisor come uh, once here in the company for an event. Um, I've seen classmates that work for uh, governmental areas and that have also, uh, you know, been here in the company um, for for other purposes. So it's always nice, you know, networking is always super important. Either your professors or your colleagues, you will meet uh, them all in the future and they might be a great source, you know, of friendship, but also of connection and networking for future paths that you might have. And uh, the second point I wanted to bring here is uh, a term that we use a lot, I guess, in, in the company, which is sorority, but it can be also like sisterhood or, you know, women helping women. Um, maybe when I was younger, a teenager, we had this, oh, you know, women don't help women, and maybe we had, you know, struggles between girls. But at least ever since I started in the company, and even in my, in my graduate uh, school, uh, I've never seen that happen, uh, and especially in the company when you might think, oh, you know, people are trying to compete. Um, I've never seen that happen either between men and women or uh, women and women. So I w just wanted to focus, I guess, on the sorority relationships uh, because it has helped me a lot uh, throughout uh, those last five to six years. Priscilla is a leader in the company, and I often had one-on-ones with her. And she incentivated me to take new roles and the role I'm currently at, I just applied after I talked to her. So, you know, that kind of thing, that incentive, that help, that, you know, um, if you're not prepared, do this or do that and try to look for this, try to do this course or, you know, just uh, the help and the connection and the friendship that we make with people in the company and especially with women has been of great, I guess, help and uh, has been um, a very positive impact on my career overall. So, you know, don't see this as a, as a we don't want to, you know, connect with men. That's not what I mean. But just, you know, take out that thinking that, you know, our oh, women are not friends with women. No, be, you know, support, uh, supportive and uh, helpful to all your, all your friends there. And then I guess the inspiration would be the last thing. Priscilla mentioned that we have a lot of programs in the company uh, that, you know, kind of help us uh, moving forward in different ways. And one of them that I wanted to talk is uh, a program that we have that's called Women in Science. Um, and it helps us in different ways. For example, uh, it helps us making meetings for us to, to connect and talk about a specific thing. Maternity, for example, could be one or how to become a leader. Uh, and it also helps us by connecting us with leadership. Uh, this year, I had the opportunity to talk with like the third most important person in crop science because of the WISE group. So it kind of, you know, help us, you know, put our faces out there, uh, learning new things, connect with different people. Uh, and it's a great inspiration as well. We have a lot of women in leadership that come talk to us. Priscilla, one of them, we just have uh, our new Bayer um, crop science president is a woman. Uh, so, you know, she's invited sometimes f to talk to us. So it really opens the door uh, to inspire us and to show us that, you know, there is a path. It's possible. It is out there uh, and it exists. So and, you know, it's just a way of saying don't give up uh, and prove your worth and conquer your space. I have a very similar view uh, as Priscilla had that I never thought I couldn't do something. Um, but it, it was always amazing to me that other people, you know, thought that, oh, you're a woman, you cannot do this. And I was like, why not? Um, I completely never agreed with that. And, you know, I never gave it up, gave up on something that I wanted. So, you know, do not lose, uh, you know, the, this desire and keep on going and be inspired by other women. And I just wanted to end saying, you know, the world needs science, as we have seen, I guess, a lot in the last year or so. And also science needs women. And we are here and we have our own space, either in academia, either in industry. We have a lot of opportunities for women out there. Thank you. Mm -hmm.